which made such a huge difference to so many people. I personally know a young woman who applied and received the startup benefit. She relocated so that she could attend college. Unless she relocated, she could not have access to a college because she didn't have a car. Just like so many of our people of low income, living in poverty, they don't have transportation. So this startup benefit allowed her to relocate so that she could have access to public transportation and attend college. And she did attend college, and she graduated college, and she is no longer a recipient of Ontario Works. My friends, this is a success story, and there are many more like it. When we eliminate this benefit, we are eliminating our success. What about the gentleman who needs the apnea machine to breathe at night? What about when it's cold in the winter and his hydro bill is going up and he needs this machine to survive, but now he can't afford his hydro bill because he needs the machine to survive and he needs heat to survive. The Community Start of a Maintenance Benefit Program would have helped him to be able to have his heat and his life-saving machine. The elimination of this benefit in some circumstances is a life and death situation. This benefit needs to continue. And as I said, we're not talking about money for luxuries. We're talking about basic necessities. The government needs to stop shirking its responsibilities and deal with the people's needs of Ontario today. We can't wait until 2018 until they think they're going to have this figured out. There is no pause button for my needs of life. You can't say pause, I'll get back to you in 2018 when I think I've got something. That is not acceptable. And what we're doing here today is exactly saying that this is not acceptable. And we need the McGinty government to stand up to the plate and provide this benefit until after the consolidation processes are in place and we have something in place to, re to replace it, to meet your needs. By eliminating <coughs> it, we're not doing that. The municipalities will not have their housing plans uh, in place or even written until 2014. So where does that leave us from now until then? It leaves you without basic needs, and that is not acceptable. And again, that's what we're doing here today. There seems to be a theme across this province today, and it's called survival of the fittest. Well, that is not my vision of Ontario, and that is not my vision of Canada. And I will not be told it's survival of the fittest, everyone out for themselves. That is not what we founded this country on, and that is not how I'm going to be willing to have this province operated. So we can, by standing up together, raise our voice and make a difference. And in some cases, we will get action. We will be victorious. But you know, in the long run, what will make you victorious is to elect a new Democrat government, one that will meet your needs and stop playing political games. Somewhere between 230 and 650 million dollars just got wasted on the cancellation of power plants while we're telling you we can't meet your basic needs. That is just ludicrous. And I want to hear you all say shame. Shame. That is not shame. acceptable. And I will not accept it. And we need to start looking for the long term and support our new Democrat candidates and elect them as our government so we won't have to continue having rallies to ask the government who is not listening to meet our needs. You're here. So thank you for inviting me here today. Please sign the petition. Go online and sign the petition and get behind your new Democrat candidates and let's elect a new Democrat government. You're here. <laughs> doing a great job out here. I'm very proud of what you're doing. I'm very thankful to all you people who are doing here. And, and I'm looking for your support and, and you prove that by being here. We are not happy the way we are. We are not being treated as the people that we are. We're, we're being discarded. We're losing our identity. We're losing our democracy. We no longer have the power we used to have Back in the 60s, back in the 70s, we brought, we're losing that. Yeah. We need we need to fight, we need to come back, and we need to show who we are. The government works for us. 
They are our civil servants. We need to get that back. They've taken that away from us. Let's get it back. Let's bring it up. Lynn, Lynn Edwards and Don Abel have said most of the stuff I wanted to say, but one, one most important thing for me and for all of you to, to remember, the elections coming up, you need to vote for NDP. It's the only party that supports the little guy. The only party who really cares. So when that time comes, we got to remember Andrea Horvath for our, our next premier. She is the one who's going to make the difference. And we are all going to be backing that one up. It's absolutely necessary that we stick together with one idea, one thing, one heart, one mind. This is what we need to do. So I don't know what more I can say, but let's get together and let's believe in that and let's do it. We can meet until we're blue in the face. We can have all kinds of meetings. Yes, it gives us voice, but it doesn't give us the power that we need to fix this country, to fix the democracy, to fix everything that's been broken up and is continually yeah. breaking up right now. Thank you very much for being here. My pleasure to be here, and I hope to hear from you and to meet some of you. I don't recognize some of you, but you will know me from now on. <laughs> Those of you who are not on OW or ODSP know very well you're one paycheck away or one pension away. Every single working person in this country is one injury away. And that's the difficulty. Canada, Ontario is on the race to the bottom. The powers that be in this country aren't prepared to go after the power brokers they want to go after the most vulnerable. It isn't just because it makes us feel good to be out here. It's because it's the only way if we're teachers, we've got to support the teachers. We've got to support the public sector workers. We've got to support the private sector. They want to take our industries away. They want to have, they want to have trade deals, secret trade deals with Europe and China, and ship jobs away. That's what's happening in this country. And the, my brother is right about what he's saying. Our democracy is also on trial. You know, not everybody's on the race to the bottom. There's about a tenth of one percent of the population is on the race to the top. And they're the ones that are calling the shots. And that's why we have to be organized and we have to be united. Well, I've traveled throughout this country. From shore to shining shore, and it really me wonder yeah. all the things I heard the song. I saw my fellow seamen standing idly by the shore, and I heard his bosses saying, "Got no work." For you no more, but the banks are made, but the banks are made of marble. The profits are gone with a guard at every door. And the vaults are stuffed with silver that we all have sweated for. Well, I saw the weary farmer just a plowing sod and loam. And I heard the auction hammer Just to beat down his home But the banks are made of marble But the banks are made of marble With a guard at every door With a guard every door The vaults are stuffed And the vaults are stuffed with silver That we all have sweated for And I saw my sister working had two jobs in every day no wages in the factory and at home she gets no pay but the banks but the banks are made of marble with a guard and every door vaults and the vaults are stuffed with silver that we all 
see my sisters and brothers working or not throughout this mighty land. And I swore we'd get together and united we'd make a stand. Then we'd own, then we'd own those banks of marble with no guard at every door. We'd share and we shared those bones of silver that we all have sweated for. And we'd share those bones of silver that we all